<clears throat> Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Julia Mann. I'm also known as the habit fix. Oh, I can't speak today. I'm also known as the habit fixer. And I help women to regain their mojo and age well. And I do that with a very simple tip tapping, tipping, tapping technique called EFT, nutrition, skincare, and digital products. I'm really hoping today that my guest, Jim Meldrum, will be able to speak, not like me. So hi, Jim. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Great introduction. Well done. Good start. Excellent. <laughs> As you know, I don't want to edit anything. I like it to be as it is. So um, what you need to know about Jim is that he's completely wonderful. And actually, he's been really helpful in terms of my LinkedIn journey. So thank you again, Jim. He is actually a sales and marketing consultant and a LinkedIn coach and trainer. And today, I believe, Jim, you're going to be talking about the daily habit to prevent piss poor performance. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Fantastic. So I'm going to hand straight over to you. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Julie, thanks very much for making so many mistakes in the intro. That's put me perfectly at ease because now I can make as many mistakes as I possibly can just to make you feel good. All right. So, yeah, I, anyone who knows me knows I I hate wasting time. It's one of my pet hates. I hate wasting time. Time and energy putting things is don't, don't, that, that, that's a complete and utter uh, waste of space is perhaps, perhaps a, a good way of putting it. So I have a daily regime. Now, perhaps it's because my dad was in the RAF and then he was in the, latterly in the police force. We were brought up pretty disciplined. So dinner was at six o'clock, not 6.05, not 5.59, six o'clock every single night. So I have a daily habit that I do every single day. So when I get down in the morning, I sit here and I open my diary and the first thing I do is I get my mobile phone out and I look at what my appointments are for that day. And for example, we are meeting at two o'clock in the afternoon. So I set a timer on my telephone for 1.50. So 10 minutes before a meeting is due to start. So in any one day, I've maybe got five or six different timers going off, but they're all going off 10 minutes before the meeting starts. Now that gives me 10 minutes to go and obviously fix my hair, yeah, apply some of that lovely face cream or whatever, but it also gives me 10 minutes to look at somebody's LinkedIn profile. Do a little bit of research, a little bit of stalking, if you like, just to make sure I remember who they are and why I'm having the conversation. It's also a good time for me to then maybe nip down and just put the kettle on for a quick cup of tea before we start. So I've got everything to hand. So that is my habit. So for example, on an average day, I've probably got four or five fixed appointments throughout the day, and they've all got a 10-minute reminder beforehand so I'm very very rarely ever late for a meeting apart from today I do apologize I'm very rarely ever late for an appointment I'm very very rarely ever unprepared for a meeting so if I'm on a call for example between two o'clock and three o'clock and I have another appointment at three o'clock my phone will buzz at 10 to 3 and that gives me the opportunity to if I'm still on the call to wind up the two o'clock meeting set my reset and be prepared for the next one but that's my daily habit, and I do that every single morning. I sit and put all my appointments in my phone alarm. Do you know, I do that too, Jim. I don't do it for the whole day, but I certainly do it just, you know, about, um, I don't know, it might be an hour before the the, the meeting. I'll, I'll, I'll put an alarm on for 10 minutes before. I love that. Yes. yes. So... You were talking about very rarely being late. Have you ever found that sometimes that can be um, that rigidity? I'm not talking about your appointments, but just in life generally, that sometimes that can be a bad thing or is it always a great thing for you? Back in the day when I was a very young salesman and had hair and I was driving around from appointment to appointment, Getting stuck, stuck in traffic was, was difficult because back when I was young, we didn't have these things called mobile phones. Right? So if we had an appointment with a, a, a decision maker, someone we'd maybe been talking to for months on end, and we were stuck in traffic, there was no way we could contact them to see if we're going to be late. So, the invent, so having a mobile phone changed my life because if I was stuck in traffic, I could quite easily send somebody a message and say, look, I'm going to be late. I'm running stuck in traffic. I'll be five minutes late. 
In this household, we work on what's called Navy time. Do you know what Navy time is, Julie? No idea. Okay. So, for example, Navy time would tell you that if you're five minutes early for an appointment, it means you're actually five minutes late. You should have been there 10 minutes before. Now, we were... <laughs> Navy times, because my wife was in the, the Royal Navy for for 15 years plus. And Navy time is you should always be 10 minutes before an appointment. So we, we'll dr drum that into our kids. So we're all working on Navy time. But before Navy time, I did like to be outside somebody's uh, premises 10, 15 minutes ahead of schedule. So I could sit down and look through my notes before and into the appointment. It's nothing worse than walking into someone's uh, office but completely harassed and finding yourself struggling to remember what you spoke about the last time round. It, it shows this, actually, I think it shows disrespect more than anything else. So the rigidity there is, is, is no, I actually think the rigidity is actually quite freeing, rather yeah. actually having a, that, 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 this lack, uh, lackadaisical approach to, to appointment setting. I do have, on an average week, I'll have between 10 and 12 appointments booked, uh, Zoom, Zoom appointments, Zoom meetings book, booked in my diary, and at least one person won't turn up invariably one a week, perhaps sometimes two. And that person has completely forgotten about the meeting because they haven't put it in their diary or they haven't looked at their diary or something else has came up and they haven't had the the time or the inclination to send me a quick message to say that they're, they're, they're having to cancel or rearrange. I put that down to what some people what, what some people call casual appointment making. So people casually arrange things, but actually with very little thought about whether well, it's actually practical to have a, an appointment at three o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon, because they haven't checked in. It's all very uh, lazy fair and, and quite, quite quite happily, yeah, well, we'll put that in the diary and we'll, we'll, we'll hope for the best. I don't live like that. No, I'm the same. And, you know, time is precious, isn't it? In fact, it's the most precious thing we have. You know, we can't get time back. You know, so I think actually valuing people's time is important. And when it comes to dinner, I know there are some people who absolutely hate it if they say, you know, dinner dinner is at eight o'clock and then you arrive at eight o'clock or just before. And, it, you know, it really stresses them out because although they say eight o'clock, they'd really much rather you arrived after eight. Yes, I, I, I like the invitations to the, 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 the events that say 7.30 for eight. Yeah. That tells you any any time between 7.30 and, say, 7.45, you should be fine. But as so long as you're there in good time so that they know they still to, to set your place at the table. Yes. Because okay. now you've arrived. Yeah. So you <laughs> talked about research, which, of course, is really, really important, isn't it? We need to know who we're going to be talking to and why we're going to be talking to that person. Mm. Do you have a system for keeping your notes? What, how do you do that, Jim? Well, I don't. Every I, 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 I just use A4 sheets of paper and a pen. So I would first of all, if you and I have got an appointment, I would look at the first thing I would do would be uh, look at your LinkedIn profile. Look at them. If we've set the appointment as we did, if we set the appointment using LinkedIn direct messages, one of the great features about LinkedIn messages is that every message you've ever sent me and I've ever sent you are always there, even if you and I were connected 10 years ago and for some reason become disconnected when we reconnect all the previous messages are all still there they yeah. don't go anywhere yeah. so the first thing i do is i'll go through the messages and see what, what why we're having the meeting what, what what's the common ground that we're, we're, we're going to be discussing what's what's the topic that's 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 going to be getting have a, we're going to have a chat about then i'll look at your linkedin profile because i do help people with the linkedin i am looking for things that i can help them with so I'll do a quick review, a quick look over the, the LinkedIn profile. I'll maybe pick up one or two things that shouldn't be there or they could be slightly improved upon because I do like to offer everybody who I speak to a couple of tips and hints about how to make the LinkedIn profile a little bit better than it is. And some people have think they've got an absolute brilliant LinkedIn profile until I point out something as simple as, you know, in your contact details, you've, you've got your Yahoo email address rather than your business address email, which is a big no-no because obviously your Yahoo email address doesn't have the same spam filters that, that your, your business one probably has. And you That's certainly right. don't, want to give, you don't want to be giving out your personal email address to anybody either. So is uh, Gmail the same then? 
Yeah, yeah Gmail, Gmail, Yahoo, Google Mail, anything that's your own personal uh, e email address. Have it on LinkedIn, but do not have it as the primary. Always have your business email as your, as your primary, as the, as the default, because that's the one that I would see when I look at your profile. And well, that's something I need to change after this, after this recording. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, so one of the things you told me, Jim, which has been enormously helpful, is that if you're going to comment on something on LinkedIn, then make sure that the that you use 15 words and that you comment before you like something. And I've been doing that since you told me about it, and I've been telling other people about it. Why is that so important? And why is it that we don't know that? Why don't LinkedIn tell us that? Uh, I don't know why LinkedIn doesn't tell us that. LinkedIn gets around to dropping little hints and tips about three months actually after it's changed an algorithm. point. So, so for example, the reason we need to have longer comments, I believe, and it's only my opinion, is that LinkedIn is trying to um, eliminate what's called engagement pods or post pods which is a group of people who get together and they all decide that, right, I'll post on Monday morning at nine o'clock and and, you, and the other 19 of you, if you can jump on at five past nine on a Monday and like it and comment on it, that would artificially manipulate LinkedIn's algorithm into thinking that this is really in, uh, engaging, pause the post and it should share it to more people. Now, LinkedIn doesn't like engagement pods because it is a, a, a false or fake engagement going on to your post, and it doesn't, it doesn't like that. So it does try to suppress it. So most engagement pod, uh, uh, people who go on it in a big engagement pod, normally they'll copy and paste something like, thanks for the post. Good, no, so thanks for sharing, lovely post. Very, very short, sweet, and they just copy and paste it 19 times for the other 20, 19 people in the, in the post pod. So if you've now got, 15 words and you've had to think about those it's very difficult for you to use those exact 15 words in the next one and the next one and the next one so actually linkedin is actually forcing us to be more mean to, to to write more meaningful comments rather than just a good post thanks for sharing or great point julie how you know yeah yeah so that's the reason i think it is um the other slightly more obscure reason is LinkedIn is not a social media platform. Shock horror for a lot of people. It's a social networking platform. So by, by putting longer comments, we are engaging with one another in a meaningful way. And we're adding to each other's profile because if someone looks at my comment, they may look at my profile, which increases my profile views. You know, maybe, maybe even want to connect with me. Or maybe direct message me. So it's about connect connectivity. So writing something like thanks or cheers doesn't doesn't do it. So 15 words or less. That came in round about I'm trying to think February, February time this year. Prior to that, it was seven or eight was the optimum number. And again, that was put out to try and prevent these post pods, engagement pods. But LinkedIn has now, I believe, increased it to more than 14, which to the last time I was in an arithmetic class, I think more than 14 means 15 plus. So good to know, Jim. And the other thing as well, I guess, is with being able, needing to use more words means that you're much more likely to ask a question, which then keeps that conversation going, doesn't it? I know some people don't like it if you've commented on their post and then you ask, or you, they commented on your post and then you ask a question. But I think it's really good to keep that conversation going because it all counts, doesn't it? At the end of the day, if you if someone doesn't like you asking them a question, then you should stop posting because that's the whole bloody point. <laughs> well said. Now, before you go, is there anything else that you really would like to say? No, I, I, I've, I've enjoyed today. I've enjoyed seeing you make a message introduction, which put Thank me you. completely out. Oh, we couldn't have had a worse start. Thank God I pulled out the fire for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. And if any of you watching want to find out more about Jim, I mean, why wouldn't you? His links will be down below, as will mine. So, you know, check him out. Ask him a question. Um, he's a mine of information. So, Jim, thank you ever so much for um, putting up with my bad behavior. And uh, thank you very much for your brilliant habits. You're very, you're very, very welcome. Thanks, you, Dylan.
If you've enjoyed this, please, please subscribe. And why not share it with someone else who needs to hear it? Thank you very much.